All right, welcome back to CNC Equipment's YouTube channel. We got something a little bit different today. As you guys know, we are a dealer for Halverson Firewood Processors. So, what we got here today is actually a brand new model, and we're getting ready to hack her up. This is a uh, HWP 150 EXT. The EXT stands for extended. Basically, what that means, the original ones would cut like a 24 inch, 26 inch piece of wood. This one's actually extended. You guys can see it's longer here to cut a 34 inch piece of wood. So. It's more set up for your boilers, um, outdoor wood boilers and stuff like that. So we've got kind of a special request from a local customer here. We're going to uh, do a little modification of this. So if you guys don't know, Matt with Diesel Creek has a Halverson 150, the standard one. And uh, Captain Kleeman has a uh, Halverson 120, kind of the homeowner version. So if you guys have not seen their channels, definitely go check them out. You can see these things in action, plus we have some videos of these things too. So. What we're getting ready to do today is, uh, you might notice we've took the wedge out. This one comes with a four-way wedge. We can set it up as a six-way wedge. Um, it was also a hydraulic adjustable. So, our customer's cutting the whiskey stave barrel um, blanks out. So basically, all he's going to be doing is using this just for a buck saw. It's going to be cutting off 38-inch lengths of wood. So we've got to set up a stop here. So when that log comes out there, it hits that stop, and you can cut it off at 38 inches. He also has a shorter length, too. Um, we may rig something up for that here after a bit later. So he's going to whack 38 inch pieces off his log. And I think I got to check with him somewhere in that 24 or 28 inch mark. He can cut the uh, tops of the whiskey barrels and stuff like that. So um, with that being said, I pulled this um, wedge out here. We're going to make a piece that comes in here and it's got a round flat plate and I got a cardboard template drawn up. So basically that log's going to come over here and hit that flat plate. Stop. He's going to cut it drop it off, slam another log over here. So this is about a three quarter inch wide slot. So we're gonna cut some three quarter inch steel. We're gonna fasten it with a one inch bolt here. And I think we may drill a couple holes through here to fasten that too, because we want something pretty solid that doesn't move. So the lumber, the white oak they're cutting is very expensive wood, so he doesn't want to waste it. Um, that being said, this whole machine should be able to go back to uh, original, original configuration. So for some reason they don't do that somewhere, we can go back and cut wood. So Really the only couple modifications we're gonna do is drilling a couple holes in this. The other thing we may do too is cut this off. That's gonna allow that log to roll out. Um, if they do decide to cut firewood or something again, we can put that back on later, but it's gonna save them a little bit of extra work. You don't have to roll that thing completely over. So that way he'll just tilt a little bit and the log will roll out. But uh, supposed to get his machine over here later today or tomorrow. Um, we're gonna hook it up on his machine. We're going to have to put the button kit and stuff in that. We may show that to you guys because I don't think we've shown that on a video yet. It's basically a plug and play deal. The other machines, um, those Takahuchis we did, Captain Clemens and um, Diesel Creeks, we actually uh, just used the buttons in their um, joystick controls. So we'll see when his machine gets over here. What he's got, if not, we've got that button option for him. Um, yeah that's about it i'm going to i've already got a cardboard template mason's going to start taking off this cylinder and stuff so we don't need it uh, we're going to get it out of the way he can keep that if he needs to cut something out so you guys probably seen we got a new plasma table wall back it's been doing awesome got some fast cut sent us one down i'm trying to find my cardboard template i got drawn up here so we got something kind of basic drawn up here just basically t-shape we're going to put a or L shape, we're going to put a round plate on there so that to butt up against. But uh, I've got to get that drawn up on here and uh, got some three quarter inch plate down. This stuff is outrageous now. I bought a new sheet of it the other day. It's $1,000. It's sitting up here almost $900 for a sheet of three quarter inch, but getting ridiculous. Um, so I'm going to make sure and draw this up um, that we're not wasting anything. If I need to change a measurement an inch or two, I can. I've got a 14 inch diameter plate. Um, I can change a couple of these measurements a couple inches if it uh, will help me save some steel, save the customer some money on that part of it. So when it gets really expensive like that, you gotta be real careful. So I'm gonna get after it and uh, get this drawn up and we'll bring you guys back. I've not cut any three quarter inch steel out with this machine yet. You guys see I've cut a bunch in the past with my old machine, but uh, gonna be curious to see how the uh, Pyramax 85 does my other plasma table had a 120 amp um hyper th or no thermodynamics on it, excuse me and uh, i guess technology's come quite a ways and 
12 or 13 years, however old my other one was. So this one has the same specs. So I'm going to be curious to see if it's going to buzz through that three quarter inch like my other one did. So, but uh, I'll get her drawn up here and uh, we'll bring it back. Got my stuff drawn up, got her in the fast cut software here. We're gonna see what happens. Like I say, this is the first time for three quarter inch steel. So I got uh, 85 amp tip on there. I got the plasma cutter on. We're gonna let her rip her and see what happens. All right, got those cut out. Not super happy with it, but it will work. Um, you guys might have noticed we started over there. I got the circle cut out. So there's new learning curves to every machine. I had to go back in there and change the uh, pierce delay in the tool. I only had it set up for 1.3 seconds. So what that means when the torch comes down here, it was only sitting there for 1.3 seconds. So when that torch lights up, it takes a while to burn through that plate. So I changed it up to three seconds or so, but uh, Still got to mess with a couple more parameters on that cut height and stuff like that, but uh, I'm gonna go in and adjust those now after I cut this. So maybe next time we'll cut out. The old machine um, loved three quarter inch plates, so I'm not sure this one's going a little bit slower, but uh, I get some stuff adjusted right. Hopefully, hopefully cut fine. It's got nice cut quality um, on a couple pieces that we actually cut out, but uh, it uh, yeah, it's not doing bad. So you guys can see. I just gotta get her tweaked. New learning curves. Um, Mason's getting those cleaned up. I'm gonna put this sheet back up and uh, rearranging things and we'll get out there and, and maybe do a little bit of welding here. Looks like our skid steer has arrived, or the customers. Brought us a couple logs too so we can do a little test cutting. Um, we got, uh, got everything cut out here. Plates, Mason's got them all cleaned up. So, you guys see we got this circle plate, it's gonna go on here, I'll show you that in a second. We're gonna go ahead and get this up, and this is gonna weld to this, and we're gonna bolt this part to the machine. Something like that, hopefully, so. Get over and get set up. Oh. Bolt went through, didn't it? Yep. Cool. And this piece put on there. I'm wondering about them bending that. You can put one on each side or just one? Uh, just one on each side. Alright, we got a contraption going on. We got our uh, piece of steel in there and the mag drill hooked up to it, so we're going to see if she'll go through there.
put this on here. You guys notice I kind of pierced that through. That's going to be able to set our final depth here too. We're looking for that 38 inches, so we've got a little room to go in and out. I'm going to make it super strong to uh, weld it up. So we just got to get it all sitting square and get her tacked on there. We'll probably take it off, take it off and weld it up around the bench or something like that. So. All right, moved the uh, processor over here. Um, I got that thing all tacked up. I do have to put a couple more pieces on it. Tucker's actually coming here this afternoon. He'll be working here in the afternoons after school. We'll have to get those tacked on there. I'm gonna let him weld all that up. But while he's uh, getting here, customer dropped off their skid steer. So we're gonna get a wiring kit put on this thing because I don't think it has enough buttons in it. Um, they did bring us a couple white oak logs too. So we can try our situation out here after a bit. So I'm gonna get these off here. Get this bucket dropped off and get her in there. Alright, got her hooked up on the machine. We've got to install this button kit. You guys have probably not seen us do these yet, but if your machine does not have enough functions in there, which this one does not, we can simply put these buttons on the front side of your joystick. So, we've got to get all this wiring run back the arm and uh, inside the cab, and hopefully we've got a cigarette lighter in here that it just plugs into somewhere. Looks like we got something here. Hopefully it's got some power, but that's all it requires. We'll put those little buttons right in the front. He's got another button there for another saw or something he's got going on. So we're going to get all that run in there. And then we'll be back. All right, we've been wiring stuff up. We got our plug plumb out here. We went down the boom hoses, back up the boom hoses, went inside the machine. We come right out here in the corner with our wires. We've got our buttons on here. I'm going to leave those zip ties a little loose so I can tweak them. But uh, we're going to go ahead and set this cab down, aren't we, Mason? Mm -hmm. come out. All right, sitting up here in the machine. I got them sitting where I think I want them at. Got the left one over here. I think that'll work. Now, we'll make sure. I think we're about ready to fire this thing up and see if it works. I gotta figure out your hydraulic system. What button? So, we're gonna be using continuous flow on the hydraulics. So, we gotta figure that out in the gale there. But, uh, another thing we need to watch for too, Mason, when I start this up, I'll pick it up and Tilt it over, make sure those hoses are long enough. So, this guy's pull a chain lube. 
Hey Mason, you want to go ahead and put this other cover on here? I think we should be done under there. Right. Look who's here. You've been missing from our videos for like two weeks. Uh, Alright, we got that all hooked up. We're going to try it out in a second. Tucker, you need to get the welding because we are waiting on you. It's a target. Why? You even got blood on it. See that? What's it for? It's for that. So he's going to use, we took the wedge and stuff off. We're going to use that to cut uh, 38 inch long log links off and some shorter ones. So this is basically just to stop for the logs. And we get these tacked on. I've pierced this through so you can weld it from the other side. Then we need to weld this here and weld that. Lots of welding. Chop, chop. All right, got everything working. We got good oil slinging out of the saw. You guys can see that there. Um, Tucker's over here welding that up. I'm seeing, seeing an issue here already. This scale's got this cab on it. You guys see this whole area, area right here? That's your vision point where you're looking out and looking through this, so it's kind of got a blind spot here. I'm curious to see if I can see that once we get that wedge on there. We may have to get a mirror or mount something up like that so um other thing we're going to do too is mount a um arm up here because he's cut cutting the 38 inch links and um some 20 i wrote them down somewhere 24 to 18s or so so we may cut it make a uh, some kind of arm that goes up with a chain to uh measure those shorter links How you doing? Good. Didn't you get rusty in two weeks off? Yeah. Should you tell everybody where you're at with your girlfriend? Tennessee. At motocross racers? Yeah. Your girlfriend's what, number six in the country? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is. Okay. You get her, Bowie? Yeah. Looks good. Okie dokie, we're going to, uh, we've been over here working on a chain holder. Uh-oh, we're all in trouble. Hey, who's going to, who do you want to be your, um, training supervisor? So you're filling out paperwork for Tucker's half day, uh, what's it called? Instruction. I, I'm your instructional teacher. Training degree. You can pick me or Kevin. I'm going to pick Kevin. Why would you do that? for obvious reasons but also because um you don't want the parent to also be the employer and also be the let's put, supervisor let's put kevin's name down it's not on it's not on the national television or anything so are you okay with kevin no. okay. supervisor kevin we'll start calling him out where's he at i'm ready mason are you ready you act like it's hot yeah it's fine tucker weld her up Boom. What are you shaking your hands for? Gloves off. <laughs> we'll get some bolts and bolt that thing up. Oh. 
How you doing, Tack Master 2000? This is pig work. This is not. Oh gosh, that blinded me. All right, so hopefully you can kind of see what we got going on here. That's good, Tucker. So we got, this thing's just tacked on. I'm not sure if it's gonna work yet. You what? How'd you do? Hit and miss, but. So we got this chain it. set at, uh, I think about 23 and a half. That's one of his pieces. I think anything from 18 to 23 and a half he's cutting off. So that's gonna come after him when it pumps his chain. So he's gonna cut long pieces, long pieces, long pieces until his log gets short and then he's cutting short pieces. Make sense? Grab that tape measure and see what we ended up with on our measurement here. That's hot. And down on the chainsaw. Go on top of the wheel there. 38 and a half. It might be a little bit, a little bit shy. We might be a little long. If we're too long, we can always add another plate to that too. It's not a big deal. Um, I don't know how it's going to cut, so I don't want to make myself tight to begin with. We can always shorten it up, so. You're just about ready to try out, ain't you? Uh. Cut up some high dollar white oak? Why are you tired? I don't know. All right, we'll take her outside. I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to see that. We may have to mount a mirror up here of some sorts, too. You got a mirror? Do I know about that? No. Put, you got a couple tacks on it? No, I don't. I want to make sure that that's not going to interfere with anything. I'm kind of worried about when we go over to pick a log up. Sometimes I've seen logs flip up. It should be all right, but we'll see here. All right, I want to take this thing outside. We're going to grab a white oak log. We may have to adjust the speed of the saw, how quick it comes down. If it's coming down too quick or too slow with the machine, every machine's different. And I've got to figure out all the freaking buttons and what they do. So. I think I'll get one piece cut off here, Mason, and we'll measure it and see where we're sitting at on that. So I'll take her outside and see what happens.
All right, so I knew we was probably going to do this. I want to make sure stuff's going to work right. I think it may. We're going to go ahead and cut this off so that log can actually roll out of there. Because it's catching, kind of holding it. It's binding that saw up in that first cut. But I don't know. It's going to be a learning game. Basically, they cut off those with the plasma cutter. I may or may have not forgot to record it. But that is okay, definitely. Let's see. Mason with the pro plasma cutting skills. That one's right. I did that. Yeah, it's okay. So now we are going to test it out without that thingy on it. I don't even know what it was. Do what? I don't know. We're going to test it out and hopefully the blade don't get pinched again. Yeah. And it cuts it right. That's some nice logs though. Order. Well, you're pushing against the chain a little bit. You're pushing against the chain over here. How long is it? 25 and a half. How much? 25 and a half. Cap number two. Let me scoot this back a little. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're good with the chain. On the back of where? Right there. 23. 23, right here, 23. Do I? Yeah, that's, that's good right there. Okay. 
22 and a half. Do what? Put your hand there where the saw's at. I'm not. I'm away from it. Well, it's earlier. Okay. 22 and a half. Am I touching the chain? Uh, I mean, you, off, you got like a quarter. Got a quarter of an inch. That. It was a little long. 24. Yeah. It was a Yeah, it looks good. My welds are sturdy. They crack? No, they didn't crack yet. <laughs> they didn't crack yet. Alright, Alright, so I think we got it. We're going to go ahead and weld that on. Um, the only thing I do notice, it's going to be hard. We're cutting these 38-inch uh, pieces. The last, uh, you can't cut the last piece 38 and then the 18 or having to cut the 223. So I think they use those for the tops or something. So I'm going to call my customer and see if that's an issue or not. What's happening? They're falling down a little bit. They have a big saw they cut these on all the time. And sometimes it breaks down. They're just wanting something for backup or something for the smaller log. So it may work out all right with them. I don't know. So I'm going to give them a call. But uh, I think we're going to go ahead and weld this on. The chain seems to be working. The problem is. It takes like 15, 20 minutes to figure out all the buttons. I'm just barely figuring them out um, at the end. So it's kind of like a playing a piano in there. But once you figure it out, you can go to town with them. So, but I uh, think it's going to do what they need to. The only thing we were looking at here, these ears, uh, these little grabbers here are made for the splitter head. Um, they may need to be cut off because the log sometimes would get caught in there. That's the only thing I see. But 
I don't want to do that yet to see if he likes it. But cutting this off here made a big difference. Um, let those roll out the side so it didn't bind up. So I think it's one of those things. Just going to try it and maybe tweak it. I don't want to waste any more of their high dollar wood because we know white oak is not cheap. So What did you do, Ron? Oh, okay. Tucker got this thing welded on there. A couple of nice slick little I don't know why you stitches. Don't, I don't know why I can't just weld all the way down. Because why? somebody may tear it off. You don't think the loggers are going to tear this off? Yeah, but why not weld it all? Oh, less grinding? Oh. Less grinding. So I think we're going to let them try this thing. We're going to get this thing cleaned up and get a little bit of paint on it. Hey, painter. Where have you been this whole project? Well, I've been uh, dazed and confused. Dazed and confused. We're going to get this cleaned up, get it painted, uh, send it to the customer and let him try it for a while and see if they need any more tweaks or modifications made. Um, if they do, we'll bring you back here in this video, but uh, if not, we're going to wrap this one up here. So hopefully you guys like something a little bit different today. If you did, let me know. Give, give me that big thumbs up down below. Hit that button there. It helps me out a lot. And if you've not been not subscribed, make sure you are so you don't miss out more cool projects like this. So. We need firewood processors. We well, call yeah. you, right? We We've got these new extended models in stock now. Got a whole load of them in stock. Yep, we got every model, 120s to 150s, including extended ones. So these cut 34 inches, I've seen them. Yep. 33 and a half a day or whatever. Yep. Interesting. Well, hopefully it works out and we don't have the end of this video. So. These extended ones, I think, are good for the boiler guys. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that machine handles that in a big chunk of white oak just fine, I can tell you that. That's, that's a big, big machine. that's <laughs> a big old machine, so I ought to do the job. So uh, yeah, hopefully it works out for them. If it doesn't, you guys are gonna see it here in a few seconds. We thank you for watching. See you next time. Hey, look at this right here. Did you put a Kevin signature on it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's that's just bad. like oh there's another one. That's yeah. I just I had two cans and I was just spraying both of them. Oh yeah. I'll just we'll wave at all the runs. <laughs> you just like Kevin. It's for your supervisor. It's for <laughs> you learn from your supervisor. Good job. Learn from the best. Hey, high five. <laughs> hey, we get paid. We get paid for that.